Welcome to the Kinda Crunchy Podcast, where we talk about all things health and wellness. We can't wait for you to hear today's episode, so let's get to it. Hi guys, and welcome back to Kinda Crunchy. Um, Jensen and Rachel here. Just us today, we're here to give you our 10 tips for blood sugar balance. I feel like blood sugar is like something that's like really talked about Hot now, topic. which I feel like was like more of just like, I associate that with like diabetes. But now it's like a lot, it has a lot to do with your hormones and so many things. Well, anyways, we'll get into it. But let's first just go into, you know, what life updates or what do you want to talk about? I don't know, Rachel, just hit me. I recently um, did this thing that like has changed my evenings, my life. And it's really stupid and simple. But like, I have to share about it. I, when I worked in the schools, had like this little rolling cart that was like my, I pulled kids Sometimes I pushed into classrooms. Sometimes I pulled kids out. When I would, it was just like in the hallways because they didn't have space for me. (laughs) Um, So I had my little rolling cart of supplies because I did occupational therapy. And uh, there's a lot of little fine motor things, little Mm -hmm. pencils and and little tools and all kinds of things. Um, So, you know, it's a lot to carry. So I had bought this myself. Well, now I don't work in schools anymore. And I was like, I'm going to keep this cart. But I didn't know what I wanted to use it for. Well, I had had a bedside stand that was kind of like makeshift since we moved into our house two years ago. Yeah, I took a while to figure out what I wanted to put there. It was like a real, it was like a real side table, but I wasn't thrilled about like how it fit in and like what I could fit on it. It was like a weird shape and stuff and too low. I was like, I'm going to put the cart there oh. because you can like hardly see it with how our bed sits in our bedroom and like who's, who's really in our bedroom that often. Yeah. And it is so convenient. So it has three layers. And I'm able, I put like all my like journals and like Bible devotional stuff on the bottom. And then the second layer, I put my massage gun in its little case and my heating pad. And a few other items like for self-care stuff. And then on the top, I put books I'm currently reading. I can put my Stanley cup. I have my alarm. I have a little like dish that has my blue light glasses, a book light, my thermometer. Um, and then like I have a little hand lotion there and a chapstick and like my magnesium foot lotion. It literally is just like I have so much more stuff than I could fit in like a bedside stand or like pull out drawer in the stand. It is just like the best. I have everything I need right by my bed. So I like, I like can't wait to go to bed because I like get cozy and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can do all this self care. I can read, I can do my Bible time in the morning or night. I can have like my little heating pad on if I want. I have my cup there perfectly. It's like the perfect height. I'm like, I'm, I'm just obsessed with this bedside rolling cart situation. And I'm like, when I have a baby, this is going to be the best thing ever because I can put all like my, my stuff I need for the baby while I'm sleeping at night and like mm-hmm. postpartum stuff yeah. in this. Cause there's Ugh. so much, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I love that I can organize the different layers. I, it's like the best hack I've had. My bedside stand is out and the rolling cart is in. Um, I'm like really jealous of you because <laughs> I don't even have a nightstand by my bed. Okay. So, and you're like, where do I put my stuff? So Logan has a nightstand on his side mm-hmm. of the bed. I guess he just, when we got married, I guess he just got that side of the bed. He's like, I just need I feel like I have more stuff. But anyways, I would say like one day in our new house, I'll have a nightstand. But we basically have our dresser on the one side of the bed, which is my side. Mm-hmm. So my stuff is like, like I'm laying in bed and I'm like, putting my drink up top. I'm going to spill it on myself for one day. My glasses are up high. It's just like inconvenient. And it's like, it's on display. It's not like hidden too. So you're living my dream right now. So you can get a rolling cart and like in the morning, just roll it out of the way into the corner and then roll it back at night. That actually is not a bad idea. Because it rolls. It rolls. It has wheels. I got it on Amazon for like 30 bucks and I had to put it together. Mine's white, but you can get black. You can get all different colors. Wow. That's We're awesome. going to have to share a picture on the Instagram yes. of my rolling cart setup, yes. but it really is like, it has made my life oh, and it's that. the simplest thing that really, but like, it's an everyday thing I use now. And I, I'm like every night I'm like, my Logan's like, I do not understand. I'm like, Oh, I just love this rolling cart. Oh. When I get into bed and he's like, little things oh, nice okay. He's just like throwing his glasses <laughs> on the floor, his phone's like, thrown across the floor not even on the charger and he's like I don't get it and I'm like yeah you wouldn't that's so funny <laughs> but yeah 
that's literally I had to share it on the podcast in case anyone else wants to do the whole rolling cart situation. Mm, I love it. My life update isn't as much of an update as something that I just wanted to talk about that I feel like has been on my heart lately. Um, We're getting deep. Can we talk about adult friendships? Um, adult friendships, I feel like it's this weird thing. Like you go to high school and you go to college and then it's like friendships kind of like change and you move somewhere or you're in different seasons. And I think we need to normalize that like you can go six months or a year or whatever without talking to someone and it's okay. Like I just had a friend mm-hmm. reach out to me after like six months. She like read my text, but like missed it or something. And she was so sorry. And it was like, no big deal. We caught up. It was totally fine. Like, we all go through different seasons. The phone works both ways. I just think it's fine that if you don't talk to someone for a while, it's not like your friendship's over. Like, friendships ebb and flow and change with seasons. Mm-hmm. We're all super busy. Let's normalize that, like, you don't need to be in contact every week to, like, be a good friend. Jess and I, before this podcast, so we, like, literally would talk and see each other every single day in high school. Like, we were good friends. She went to Pitt. I went, like, to Penn State, like, commuting from home and stuff. And then, like, we were, like, doing different stuff in life. I came down and visited you one time in Pitt for, like, a weekend. Yeah. Randomly. But Jensen and I, like, did not talk through college, like, daily or anything. We don't have the time for that. Yeah. Okay? And that doesn't mean I don't value our friendship. It means when I message you, like, and it's been three months, six months, and I'm like, hey, when you come into town next, we should get coffee. Or she says, I'm coming to town, let's get coffee. We have so much to catch up on. And it's like so nice because you're like, oh my gosh, I have so much to talk to you about. And it's like such genuine time compared to like everyday texting. What's up? What's up? Nothing new. Yeah. Nothing. Just going for a rent. Like, I don't care yeah. what you're doing day to day. I'm not sorry. For that. And like, you're actually going to become an annoyance. In my- <laughs> okay. Not that I like don't want to talk to people. I I don't, don't text my husband like yeah, that. Same. Like... I, you're working, I'm working, like, don't need to know about it, you know what I mean, like, so, yeah, I think, I, I like that, because I do think we just, like, need to normalize it, and then it does make it, like, more special, and, like, we're all busy, and, like, yes, relationships are the most important thing, but we all have so many relationships Mm -hmm. to manage, you have your relationships with, like, your work and co-workers, your family, your parents, your siblings, like, your church, or, like, in whatever community groups you're Mm -hmm. in, and then you have all these friendships and it's like beautiful to have so many friends, but like you can almost become overwhelmed by them and then you're not enjoying the friendship. So just like, yeah, I think normalizing being like, it doesn't mean we're not friends. Yeah. I also have friends from Pittsburgh that I don't know when the next time I'll see. Like I truly yeah. don't. And it's okay to have friends for seasons. Like it's okay that when mm-hmm. I was in Pittsburgh, I was really close to these people and nothing bad happened. Like we didn't, there was no like, there's no tension now. Like, if I would see them, I would, like, love on them. Give like, them a hug and be like, oh, my gosh, how, how are, are you? you? But it's, like, it's okay. Like, we're not capable of maintaining all of these relationships mm-hmm. at all seasons, at all times. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, a lot of people, I think, especially coming out of college, have a hard time with that transition. And I just want to, like, say it's, like, okay to normalize that, like, we don't need to, like, always be, like, having these friendships where we're just talking all the time because it's truly not – we're not capable of not doing sustainable. It. Not sustainable, that's the word. Yeah. No, and like that is one of the beautiful parts of social media, I think. It's like I have people that were like friends for a season that I'm able to follow now yeah. and like like their stuff or like shoot them a DM and be like, oh my gosh, I hope you were doing amazing. Yeah. I'm so happy to see like you're pregnant or you got married. Like that is beautiful. And yeah. I'm like not offended at all that I'm not invited to their wedding because yeah. like we're not on that level of friendship anymore. Yeah. Like, why would I be invited to yeah. your wedding? Because we're not, like, consistently talking. I'm not in that circle for you. But, like, I am nothing but happy for you. And, like, love being able to follow along with you on there. And hope it's, like, the same. Because there's no bad blood. It's just seasons of life, you know? So, I just wanted to talk about that. I like that. that. I think that was good to talk about. That's all. We can get into today's episode topic. Okay. We're talking about 10 tips for balancing blood sugar. So, yeah. Blood sugar, I feel like, is a hot topic. Like we said. Like, lots of people talking about it Mm -hmm. right now. There's the glucose goddess. I feel like she's blowing up, rightfully so. We've, we've mentioned her multiple times. We will be linking her in this. We're obsessed with her. She is amazing for showing these really cool charts that, mm-hmm. like, I'm a visual. So seeing, like, a visual of, like, what happens to your blood sugar when you eat an apple versus an apple with peanut butter. Like, there's a difference. And it's really cool to actually see what's happening to your body. Yeah. So blood sugar, like, the whole 
craze about it is essentially when your blood sugar spikes, it spikes your cortisol, which is your stress hormone. And like we said, when your body's stressed, and especially if we're doing this chronically and chronically stressing our body, stress can lead to inflammation and other stress on our internal body that can cause disease or health issues. Mm -hmm. Um, It can be a root of disease. So yeah, I mean like a blood sugar spike, we're all gonna have them once in a while. Yeah. But like if we're doing these things regularly that we're spiking our blood sugar day to day, that's going to negatively impact your health and like take a toll on your body, your hormones, your stress level, mm-hmm. your organs, all of it. Yeah. Um, a lot of people actually are pre diabetic mm-hmm. in like America. Like I don't have the exact stat on that. Can I out myself? Sure. <laughs> Give us your so, out, Jensen. When I was doing just trying to figure out some hormonal imbalances. Like, I forget what the pre-diabetic number is. It's either, like, 5.5 or 5.7, I think, to be considered Mm pre-diabetic. I was, like, one notch away, which I was, like, I literally eat so healthy, and my husband's eating, like, Skittles. Not Skittles. I don't know. He just eats candy, and I'm, like, how am I pre-diabetic? Like, it didn't make sense to me because, like, if you would look at my diet, it's, like, the bill of health. But it's crazy how, like, if I'm just eating fruit by itself all the time or if I'm eating, like, a high carb granola bar that maybe is healthy like there's a lot of things that can spike our blood sugar like stress all these things mm-hmm. so I actually did lower it which I was super proud about I did get blood work health clean I, I but it was it's doing a lot of these tips that we're going to talk about that are pretty simple to do but make the, a big impact and, on our actual like health but I'm not trying to toot my own horn but if I'm pre-diabetic like <laughs> like that sounds really bad but I'm like what is the rest of America because your looks don't aren't just associated with yes. diabetes. Like you're true. You're the way you look does not correlate with your internal yes. health all the time. Yes. Skinny fat is a thing. Have yes. you ever heard of that? Where like you see these like bean poles, but they're like they're fat on the inside, basically. Yeah, like they have a lot of like the bad fats around their organs or stuff, or like their internal health not great, and like. That's that's really what we're talking about here is like yeah. internal health, not yeah. for aesthetics. If yeah. we can yeah. say that a million times, yeah. So you can lower your blood sugar naturally because I did it. So no, oh, not not living proof. Again, not tr- I'm honestly just saying like you could be thinking you're pretty healthy and you have like you could be almost pre diabetic. Like it happened to me and I was like so like the doctor called me like yeah you're almost pre diabetic and I was like what I was okay. like so upset I was like what <laughs> how but yeah our tips will help. So. Yeah. Should we get into this? We should just get into them. We have 10 of them for you. Okay. I'm going to go with the first one. This okay. is uh, Glucose Goddess. Like, I think she has a really good post about this. And, like, I've seen a lot of people talk about this. Okay. One of the things that majorly helps when you are going to eat a meal is if you drink, like, a little water with a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar mixed into it before that meal. Like, when you look at the charts of your blood sugar, like, it helps to start balancing yeah. you so much now i don't love apple cider vinegar Mm -hmm. don't do a raw shot of it you're gonna burn your throat i've done it no no um you can use it on the food too Mm -hmm. like say you're having a salad or some greens to start your meal put some apple cider vinegar on some greens to start the meal it's going to have the same effect yeah or even in I, I think other types of vinegar can work say, the same way. It doesn't yeah. have to be apple cider. Vinegars in general. Like, so, like, a good thing you can do is, like, before you have, like, a raw carrot salad, I'll put some apple cider vinegar on. Or That's if I'm just doing, like, a little spinach salad, I'll do, like, maybe a balsamic mm-hmm. vinegar. Vinegars are really great. I'm going to read this because I looked this up. Um, <laughs> and I'm not going to try to, like, memorize uh-huh. it. So, the acid and vinegar slows down the rate at which the stomach empties the food you've eaten into the small intestine, which in turn slows the breakdown of carbohydrates and gives the body more time to remove glucose from the blood, which ultimately reduces the spike in blood sugar. So there's a science behind it. But basically adding some kind of vinegar into the beginning of your meal, whether it's like on a salad, whether it's like sometimes I like to put a little bit of balsamic vinegar on like tomatoes with some, Ooh. it's really good. Yeah. Just like on yeah. and eating that at the beginning of your meal, like instead of having it at the end, at the beginning, it's going to be a lot better. And then it's going to slow down the spike as you eat the rest of your food. Yep. That's tip number one. Number two, pair carbs with a protein or healthy fat. 
So no naked cards. Ah, I was gonna say that. I know. I I, I didn't know if you were gonna say it or not, but I feel like that's like phrase. I love it because like we're not saying don't eat carbs, but if you're gonna have a piece of bread, put some real butter on it. Add, if, add, add, add an add. apple. Add some nut butter yes. with it. Like you, like I love dates, but dates are like super like they will spike your blood sugar. But I always mm -hmm. put a little bit of butter or almond butter on it. Um, some yeah. cheese. I love like a cheddar cheese with my date yeah whatever your combo is but just try not to eat carbs alone because that's when your blood sugar goes through the roof when you pair that protein or fat with it it slows the breakdown of the starches in your body so just being aware of like you know if you're gonna have like like last night probably should have maybe had you know well you had milk with your that was smart of you you had milk with your crumble cookies but i, I love I, milk but with like cookies. trying to like you know if you can maybe have your dessert right if you're having a super carby dessert have it like right after you had your meal. we did we had it after yeah meal, so so yeah just trying not to eat carbs by themselves because that spikes your blood sugar yeah because of the way your body processes yes. them when you add in like a protein or yeah. fat it helps to slow down the metabolizing of them and yeah. allow your body to like process it better yeah. um okay the next one is to prioritize whole foods or carbs in good portions mm -hmm. so really focusing on whole foods and what you're eating foods that can spike glucose or blood sugar are really ultra processed foods, mm -hmm. refined grains, sugary things, um, fruits. So, and fruits are healthy for you, but focusing on eating as many whole foods as we can and having good portions of them that kind of goes in with the pairing them with healthy proteins yeah. and fats, but just, you know, we've, we've preached this a million times here. Just like thinking about those whole foods versus a food that has a million ingredients that's really processed, that's probably likely to spike your blood sugar compared to like eating some like rice and chicken and like yeah. veggies. Yeah. Compared to eating like a quick like chicken nugget or like yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know French fry. Yeah. There's gonna be a difference in the way your body processes that. Yeah. Focusing on whole foods is much just always possible. going to always gonna help be help in always. always. Um, the next one is to walk after meals, even if it's just a five to 10 minute walk within 60 minutes of your meal, I would even just add in like moving your body. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're dancing around the kitchen. Maybe you're going, throwing a load of laundry, take your doing dog dishes. out, doing dishes. Like I really try to focus on like, I'll go home for lunch. I'll eat my lunch and then I will go get the mail. Then I will go take that layout. Then I will go water my plants. So I'm doing these movements after I eat mm -hmm. because when you're moving, the glucose doesn't enter the bloodstream because it can be used for in your muscles. So maybe you're doing 10 squats. Maybe you're just, I don't know, some kind of movement. Um, but I would say instead of just like sitting around after your meals, I mean, you know, if you eat a meal and then you just sit on the couch, you kind of feel crappy. You're, when you're eating food, your body is like, okay, we ate this food for fuel. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to use it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really have anything to add to that one that was... Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think that's all I have on it. Yeah. My next one's another one that kind of goes in with movement. Mm -hmm. Um, weight training specifically helps to curb insulin resistance, um, and helps to combat that. Um, there's so many benefits for weight training on mm -hmm. the body. Um, having muscle on your body helps your overall health, mm -hmm. the way you process food, it, it goes so much beyond like, oh, I'm strong or I look good. Mm -hmm. um, that weight training is so balancing to your hormones in general. Mm -hmm. So like grounding for your body, mm -hmm. um, that it can really have an impact on your blood sugar and on balancing and on those hormones um, compared to like a high intensity HIIT workout, yeah. which is spiking those fight or flight hormones and things yeah. like that. Yeah, I would agree. Something I, when I was looking into this, so weightlifting is an anaerobic exercise, which means glucose is the main energy, energy source, where aerobic is more using oxygen and fats as the main energy source. So incorporating weightlifting into your week, you're going to get stronger, your body's going to process glucose better, and you'll just be a strong girly. For sure. Um, so the next one is to eat breakfast within 30 minutes of waking with a good protein amount. Um, we are not meant to start our day to wake up, do a bunch of things for a few hours and then eat. There is so much science back behind when you wake up, 
getting your blood sugar at a balanced level by putting some food in your body. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you start out the day with eating breakfast, it's just going to be balancing to your body. I mean, within an hour, hour and a half of waking, mm -hmm. eating a balanced breakfast is just going to kind of set you up for success. <laughs> Benny, you good? Okay. Okay, eating a balanced breakfast within like an hour and a half of waking is gonna kind of set you up for success. Just start your hormones on a more like leveled place yeah. than like say doing intermittent fasting or just like hitting the coffee hard yeah. first thing. Um, so getting that a little bit of protein, even if it's just like Peanut butter isn't really a protein food. Mm -hmm. It's more of a fat, but yeah. there's a little bit of protein in it. Yeah. Even if it's just a little protein in there, it's going to help keep you full. It's yeah. going to kind of like set you up for success. Mm -hmm. But really just focusing on trying to get that breakfast in mm -hmm. so you're consistently having like a more steady state. You're breaking that fast. Yeah, and I used to like not eat before my workouts in the morning. And some mornings I do and don't. Again, I listen to my body. Mm -hmm. But if I wake up and I'm hungry and I'm going to the gym, or especially if I'm like waking up at 5, teaching pure bar at 6, and not getting home till 7.30, I'm eating something small. Even if it's literally just like a little tiny protein bite or a few almonds. Like I just put something in my body so I have mm -hmm. fuel. <laughs> I'm putting something in my body so that I have a fuel source. And then I will come home and I will have an actual breakfast. But, like, just putting something in my body so I'm not just, like, mm -hmm. running on cortisol, like, starving, coming home, and then, like, finally eating a few hours later. Yeah, absolutely. And that kind of, like, segues into our next one, which is breakfast before coffee. And you've heard this so many times for us, from us. Um, if your first thing you do in the morning is drink coffee – it is going to just like. That is so. If the first thing you do in the morning is drink coffee, it is just going to like spike your blood sugar and start your body on the stress state. Like, even if you don't realize it and you're like, it's my cozy cup of coffee, it is having those effects on your body. So, even eating just something small, I've also seen people with their coffee add in things like cream or an egg yolk i've seen people do egg yolks or collagen collagen mm -hmm. um something to give their coffee a little more sustenance yeah so it's not just like caffeine spike coffee spike and it's also worse especially if you've had a bad night's sleep so there's a lot of others mm -hmm. looking at this there's a lot of science behind like if you're starting your day with coffee it's bad no matter what but it's worse <laughs> if you've had a bad night's sleep too so that really compounds the effect so, and that's probably when you think you need it the most. Oh, I slept bad. I need extra coffee this morning, which maybe you need more coffee, but make sure you're having food before that. So yeah. Literally lower the spike. Be like your tendency. Oh, bad mm -hmm. night's sleep, need extra coffee today. And then your body's just like, ah, <laughs> it's crazy. And like, I'm a testament of this. Like I was just always the coffee before food girl. And I can tell you, like, I feel so much better. So not only is it I know it's better for me, but I actually do feel better. More feel balanced. Like my digestion feels better. I just feel like I'm not like all over the place. Yeah. Okay, next one is eat the whole food like an orange instead of orange juice because the fiber helps the body absorb the fruit a lot better. I think we are just so inundated of just like having all these fruit juices, which are fine once in a while. Like I love like a really fresh pressed juice, but the issue is like you take all the fiber out of that and that is where your blood sugar goes crazy. Cause you can see the sugar in an orange and an orange juice and maybe they're similar, mm -hmm. but you're not seeing is with the orange, like there's fiber with that, which is helping your body break down. I don't know if you heard of a study. There's a professor at college. I heard this somewhere where he gave like a student a glass of orange juice and they drank the orange juice and no issue and then he had another student where he's like I need you to eat six oranges and he did this like the first day of class and he has a little garbage can because he knows they're gonna throw up and after like three oranges like the person like throws up because their body can't handle that much wow. sugar because the fiber is or they can't handle that much fiber because their body can't absorb it whereas like with the juice they're just like can down as much as they can so 
that's the importance of fiber. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, again, our, our culture is kind of like fast and convenient and things. And I think a lot of times we like, I'm not telling you to eat the banana peel or like the avocado skin, but like even an apple, eat the peel of the apple. Like, I think there's reasons foods grow like they do mm -hmm. that to consume them the way they are is yeah. like really in its pure state. And like, we like to alter things a lot and change them. And I just think that like, yeah, the, they're kind of created in like this amazing way to work with your body and yeah. we need to appreciate that more. Yeah. So eat your fiber. I love that one. The next one is manage stress, which we just had our whole stress episode mm -hmm. a few back. Um, stress is a major disruptor to our bodies, to our hormones. Mm -hmm. Um, we've talked about this a ton. Uh, when you're stressed, your cortisol spikes mm -hmm. and that's going to have negative impacts on your hormones. It is going to affect things like your blood sugar potentially. Mm -hmm. So really managing that stress is overall going to help keep you balanced in so many more ways than just yeah. blood sugar. Yeah, we're trying to keep our bodies out of fight or flight mode as much as we can. Yes. So manage your stress. Um, and if you need more tips on that, check out that episode. Yes, that's a very long, good episode. Yeah. With tons of stress tips. Yes. Um, so we're in our last one already. I know, this is like a really quick, simple, just here's your 10 tips episode. Yeah, I love it. You normally very long winded, and this is, we're flying, so that's I think fun. we're just hungry for lunch. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, so the last one is the order of your foods, which I feel like this is like the simplest tip, but like something that I never would have like thought about. So the order in which you like eat your foods can help with like the digesting and the blood sugar spike. So mm -hmm. when you're starting your meals, say you have like a salad, you have a protein and you have a potato, starting with the salad and protein and then finishing off with the potato, that will help absorb the, that carb better. So by starting your meal with your greens, your proteins, um, again, like we said at the beginning, glucose goddess has charts on this where you can literally see like when she has a salad before her pizza versus just the pizza, mm -hmm. like it slows down the spike of blood sugar. Um, so I would say like, if we're not telling you to even cut out any carbs, like you can literally have pizza. No, have eat carbs. Carbs, eat carbs are good for carbs you and good. necessary. For but you. when you can have like some greens before your vegetable before some protein before to help slow down the spike. If like, I would say like eating the order or changing the order of your food is like the easiest thing you can do because literally nothing yes. is changing except just the order that you're eating it on your plate. Yeah. I, I mean, essentially like those greens or fibers kind of get in there and like coat mm -hmm. your, your lining and prepare your body for digestion. And then protein is slower to metabolize or digest. Mm -hmm. So when you're eating protein, the digestive process is going to slow down. So if you put that carbon after you're having to work on that protein, it slows down the absorption. So mm -hmm. it's, it's over a longer period versus you eating that carb first. That's something that can metabolize or digest very quickly. And when that happens, that's, what's going to send our blood sugar, like whoop, cause it goes all to nothing mm -hmm. or nothing to all. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing to all. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, so simple to just be like, hmm, this is the order I'm going to eat them in Yeah, to help your body feel a little better after your meals. We all have had that feeling where you like are like, oh my gosh, like you're either on a sugar high and mm -hmm. then you crash mm -hmm. or like crashing after a meal. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, 100%. That does not feel good. We don't want to be doing that regularly. No. So yeah, I... I think these tips can definitely help with the blood sugar balance. I feel like this tip, this one's hard though, because restaurants, I feel like make this very hard. Mm. What do they bring out? Bread. They bring out delicious chips, bread, chips and salsa. Like they bring out all the carbs True. first, which is hard. And again, like you're not going to be perfect with this. You know, sometimes like if you're hungry and you're at a restaurant and there's bread, Hey, make sure you slap some butter on it and that'll help. That's it. what I was going to say. Dip it in olive oil or, some or put some bread on it or some bread, some on, bread, your bread. on your bread, <laughs> double up on the bread. No, put some butter on it mm -hmm. or like request a side salad, like yeah. order a side salad and eat that and then have, have like your, your bread. bread. Yeah. But yeah, yeah just be more mindful of it. Yeah. We hope these tips are helpful because I know like blood sugar is something I've definitely like, it's been a focus of mine the past year or two. Mm -hmm. And now it's kind of nice. Like I don't really think about it. Like now I just automatically, oh, I have my mm -hmm. salad first on my plate or like, I just know to like, 
have something with my apple. So it's one of those things like it might seem a lot at first if you've not implemented any of these things, Mm -hmm. but over time they'll just become habits and they'll be more sustainable. So I would implement one at a time. Like if there's, we have 10 tips, try one this week. And once you figure that one out, add another one in and you'll be a blood sugar queen. Yeah, I hope it does help because I feel like a lot of people are talking about this and you see stuff and you're like, what the heck even is blood sugar? Yeah. And what do I do about it? And why do I do it? And does it matter? And so it can lead to diabetes, like ultimately. Yeah. Or like hormone imbalances or just like chronic stress and like not feeling good. So it's important. Um, But these hopefully are some easy things that you're like, okay, I I can manage a couple of those to try to impact. Yeah, my body loves to eat. So should we go into our latest cringy or crunchy? We should. I don't know. I feel like it's been a while since we've done these. We are always like, okay, wait, what are we doing for the next one? And then we're like trying to figure it out. We need to like come up with a better list of like, we really want to try these things out. But this time we did some like meditation deep breathing yeah to really see the results yeah yeah what's your what's your you want me to go first sure go ahead I think it is a crunchy practice I think (laughs) that doing guided meditation doing breath work doing these practices where you're getting still are so good um I think I need to be better at it because I did this a few times and I felt so good after it, but I'm really bad at taking that time to slow down in my day. So if you're the type of person where you're like, oh, I can't, I don't have the time to do meditation or like I couldn't sit still for 10 minutes. You're the person that needs it because I'm the person that needs it because I'm always like, da, 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 I've got my to-do list, have to do things. So I would say this is definitely crunchy in my books. And again, it doesn't need to be long. It can be five minutes. Mm-hmm. I've been trying to like on my lunch break, like I'll have lunch, I'll walk do my movement after, mm-hmm. and then I will sit down and I will try to do like a five minute like meditation. And what's really cool, I do a lot of like Christian ones too, where it's like speaking scripture over you, mm-hmm. but you're also just like resting a lot. A lot of the meditations that we're doing, it's like, okay, all the things you're like thinking about right now, just set them down because we're just especially women, we're just always thinking about things. So my vote is to try to incorporate something like this into your daily or weekly practice. But Rachel, you can tell me what your thoughts are. Yeah, I think I need to be better at it too. The thing that sucks is like, it actually works. And it actually (laughs) makes me feel better when I do regularly meditate. And like, I'm really bad about making time for it. I definitely think it's like a crunchy practice. I think Um, I personally am cringy because I like wanted to do it every day and like got a few days in. So I'm not really like uh, being as good at it as I should. I wish I could be like, I did it 30 days straight and these are my results. Mm -hmm. Um, But even from just doing a few, I'm like, okay, I do feel better those days. Also, like I just like the stillness it creates Mm -hmm. and like to focus on your breath. Like when else are you doing that? Just like those deep belly breaths. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think it's really impactful and like I actually can tell I feel better like mentally and physically and stuff and just like more restful. So it's definitely crunchy. I definitely would recommend like if you're like meditating sounds so weird or woo woo, like literally just do like a five minute one that's just like focused deep breath work or like Jen said like a Christian one. If you feel like it's like out there or weird, um, it really is like good for your body yeah. and there's so much research and it like it really works it, and like it's hard to consistently do it. and I don't know why it's such a simple habit it costs nothing mm-hmm. it's like five minutes mm-hmm. it's definitely something I want to try to be better at yeah but it gets the crunchy stamp of approval yeah so that's yeah. all we have I think this week yeah this is just like a short and sweet one which yeah so you don't Hope have to you guys talk it. that much yeah, I hope you guys liked it and that these tips are helpful to you. And also, I feel like we should just be throwing this into our episodes now. Like, we have a website. Um, yes. We also have merch. So make sure you check that out. We have resources um, on our website. Yes. We also have just, like, a really cute website that Rachel designed. So if you're like, oh, my gosh, they did such a good job. No, Rachel did a good job. Aww, so thanks. giving her all the credit because it's so cute and aesthetically pleasing. So make sure you check it out. Um, but, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube – Thanks for tuning along with us. Yeah, we have YouTube. Yeah. In case so, you haven't been there watching and you like to watch us on video. Yeah. This is us. So make sure you like the video, subscribe, um, leave us a comment if you have if you tried any of these or have any questions. Like we just love connecting with you guys. Again, you know, social media, send us a DM. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're just having fun here. We guys. are. We're just living our best life. This is podcast. Like, yeah, we're like, you know what? This is just like a good time for us. Yeah, we literally love recording these, and like, it's it's genuinely just like we're having so much fun, and we're happy that people are enjoying it so much because yeah. it really is just like a passion project thing. And yeah, like we get giddy thinking about recording. We're like, oh, I get to record this weekend. Like we truly yeah. get so excited. So we're just glad that you you guys are along for this journey with us. I so. love to talk, and I love that you guys <laughs> love to listen to me. Too. We hope. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> but uh, I think that's it for today. Yeah. Thank you guys for being here. We hope you have an amazing day. The best. And we will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye Remember, although we talk all things health and wellness here, this is not medical advice and you should always seek out your medical professional for further questions. Thanks again for listening. Please remember to share, comment, and subscribe to help support our podcast.